That was God. That's a good song. You finish that. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, a lot of different kinds of music, but <clears throat> I love rock music. And probably some of you look at each other kind of strange, but uh, I really feel good when they sing rock. I mean, it just really makes me feel good. Because you can't sing about nothing better than a solid rock. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about Nirvana and Who and all those. <laughs> that kind of rock. I'm talking about singing about the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. And, <clears throat> and that is good. We appreciate all of you tonight. Um, God bless you. We're glad you're here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you all had a lot of singing because I don't have a very long message tonight. Is that okay? <clears throat> Anybody complain if I don't preach very long? Anybody complain if I preach a long time? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I do. Um, I couldn't go to, that, go to the parade because, uh, well, I'm a little older, you know. No, this church comes first and the people in it. And I got to let that come first. I would love to go to camp meeting every night. But... You know, I can't see you after night very well. I just got to go one night. But um, you never find any greater preaching than what Mike Blanton did and, and things I'd love to do outside. But <clears throat> sometimes I have to save my energy for things, visiting and so on. And, I, and that's what God called me to do. And that's what I intend to do. Uh, the parade, that's great. And I have a good time of fellowship and everything. But you know, that's not really where we take a stand for Christ. Where we take a stand for Christ is at work, out in the world, and so on. And how we act after the parade's over, whether or not we're in church on Sunday night, or whether we're, you know, taking a stand for Christ comes from the church. And you can do everything else, but if the church is not supported, then pretty soon we'll be to blame for what's going on in the world. So there's nothing more important than your church on Sunday night, Sunday morning, prayer meeting. I know you can't be here all the time, but um, if you want to see things go on and people get saved, you know a sinner looks at people and if you don't go to church as a Christian, uh, they're going to say, well, it must not be much. They don't, not very interesting, you know. I've heard people tell me that somebody invited me to church, begged me to come, and I got there, they wasn't there. <clears throat> I really encouraged them, you know. <clears throat> That's not my message. If you turn with me tonight, uh, we appreciate you all. And people who still give God your time, your labor, and everything. And uh, you can't buy your way to heaven. Prize is at the end of the race, and you're precious to us, and we appreciate you so much. 26th verse of uh, um, fifth chapter of, Ma um, of Luke. Is that what's up there? Luke 5:26. Yeah. I wrote it. I should know. I, you know. <clears throat> I'm going to read you some scripture tonight. Do my best to mind the Lord. And I feel the presence of God here tonight in those songs and everything that's, uh, that all of you sung. And uh, it would be a mighty lonely place without that. And music is a great part of worshiping God. Some churches don't believe in it. But, uh, boy, if they'd read the Testament, they'd find out that they had music. Paul sing in the jail. And they were all amazed and they glorified God <clears throat> and were filled with fear, saying, We have strange things, seen strange things here today. And, you know, that's a long time ago. They saw things they had never seen before. Always before, it was taking a bullock or a sheep or something to the altar, and slaying turtle doves and so on, and offering them up to the Lord and Heave offerings was taking a, a, a you know a shoulder of an animal and holding it up to God and waving it and they went once a year to get forgiveness of their sins and now these people have just seen a house full of people gathered in so full around a man that they didn't know anything about 
But yet he drew a crowd and the house was so full, nobody else could get in. And then they saw these people coming down the road carrying this man on a stretcher. And uh, these four men were carrying one man. And they came up, was going to take him inside and see him healed because they heard that Jesus was there. But it was strange that they brought this man, no telling how far they carried him. <clears throat> but when they got there, the house was full. And it was strange to these people standing around that these people would start climbing up towards the roof. You imagine trying to carry somebody up on the roof and them unconscious? Did you ever try to lift somebody that's passed out? Everybody just completely limp? It's almost impossible to do. But they took him up on the roof. Can you imagine those people standing around and saying, what are those people doing? They must be out of their mind. Do you know you do things today as a Christian, if you're the holiness Christian, you're full of the Holy Ghost, and you mind God and you do what the Lord wants you to do, whether you know it or not, there's people still saying that you're out of your mind for what you're doing. You know, I don't believe in that. You, you're just out of your mind. Well, when they got there and, and couldn't get here, they went climbing up the ladder, carrying this man. I mean, you know why they carried this man? It's because they loved him. And nowadays, they pay people to carry you when you get sick. And if you can't, and you can't pay them, they don't carry you. Huh? Right. Call in. Call 911. See if you don't get a bill for it. But they loved this man. They saw people loving a man that was worthless, you might say. Might already look like he was already dead. Why fool with him? Because he's almost gone and all this trouble. And why in the world are they taking a sick man up on top of the roof? Jesus is inside. If there's anything can be done, they're going to have to get in there. Well, see, some folks could get a lot from God if they just loved more and if they just didn't give up because a little obstacle got in the way. You know, my doctor might look at you and say this, this, or that, and the other thing, and you let that get you down and get all in the way and get you excited and so on, and boy, there's no hope, and every, all those kind of things. When you look at that doctor, like Marcia said, she looked at the doctor that day that told her mother had a 5% chance of making it, and said she's going to make it, and said he just stood and looked at her. She said she's going to make it. And said after she got better and got to eating, got up and her heart straightened out a lot, her kidneys had started working, and even before that, said she asked the doctor, said, I told you she's going to make it. Said he never said anything. He saw something strange going on there that he works with almost every day of his life. But yet it was strange that something took place and raised her up. This was strange to him. Church, I hope we don't get into the place where we think that things that God does is strange. There's nothing that should be strange to us than what God does. It may look foolish to the world, and it should. When we get to where we're not doing anything that the world don't think is strange, we have done lost out with God. And everything we do for the Lord, if the world notices, then you talk to them, they think we're strange. But they took this man up on the roof and they tear, started tearing off shingles. And they probably stood down there and said, they're tearing off that shingles off this roof. Those people are crazy. They're going to have to pay for that. I'll tell you, I own part of this building. I'll just take and tear them off. But I'm, tomorrow I'm going to get me a lawyer and I'm going to...